All right, y'all, it's that time, the Flex Zone. Yes, this is a Tuesday, a very special edition of the Flex Zone with a very special guest on deck to close out Women's History Month. Stay tuned, y'all will not miss a thing. It's the Flex Zone, y'all, because we're the place that gives you sports how you want it, when you need it. What's good, everybody? This is the Flex Zone, and you already know what it is with the brothers in the man cave. This is your boy, Dre, filling in. Byron could not be here this evening, but we got myself. We got a right-hand man who handles everything for us on social media, and you even see him from time to time with some of these YouTube videos. The man who handles it all, Uncle Raj. What's good, baby? What's going on, everybody? This is your boy, Uncle Raj. I'm here. Um, got a very, very special guest in the house tonight. Can't wait to talk to her. I have been dying to talk to her for a good minute about these Baltimore Ravens and a bunch of other things, but can't wait to talk to her. Uh, oh, I, oh I, I, I forgot to do it. I, I'm going to do it in my best uh, Booker T voice. No bread, no water, <laughs> just me. Still crazy to me. Still is crazy. <laughs> 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 And of course, that's my other right hand man, my brother from another mother, the captain of the goofy ship, the voice of reason. Unfortunately, I do have to say he do be the voice of reason, yes. <laughs> my brother, Cravante Heard. What's good, baby? Man, we here, man. Uh, it is indeed a Tuesday. This is a little different for us, but we make uh we can uh we we switch things up from time to time, keep the good people on their feet. Um, so I'm ready to get started. We could jump right into it, y'all. Oh, and Graven, right. what up, baby? Our, our guest, she needs honestly no introduction, but she we're gonna give her our, our introduction. She is the NFL chick. You can catch her also on 1057 The Fan, as well as many other places, because she is known throughout the NFL world. The NFL chick, Rita Hubbard. Y'all, welcome to the flex zone. Hey everybody, thanks for having me. What's going on, Rita? Big complaint. Thank y'all for having me uh, come on the show. Oh, thank you for for being on the show. Um, I remember meeting you when I was at WEAA and Bobby Marvin Holmes introduced us. Ooh. Yeah, that, <laughs> <laughs> that took you back. Been a she was it's like, been a yeah. minute. So glad to have you on the show and. Uh, let's get right to it. I'm going I'm to I'm toss it to you for the first question. Oh, man. Uh, well, well, before we do any questions, we have to talk about earlier today um, with the uh, key bridge going down. We have to give our condolences to the six people that may have lost their lives. And um, oh, yeah, because it was that that was a terrible, terrible um, situation. Um, Absolutely. So uh, let, let's, let's definitely take a moment of silence for that first. Let's just do that. Okay. All right. My first question. Um, <laughs> I've been dying. Oh, man. Um, the Ravens had a phenomenal season last year. We went to the AFC Championship game. Lamar Jackson won his second MVP award. Um, wonderful season. Like, did not expect all of that. Didn't really think they was going to make it to this, you know, make it um, to the AFC Championship game, in my opinion. But we did. Um, going in, going in, uh, go, how, how, what, what were your thoughts on last season's performance by 
Lamar, um, Odell, just everything in general. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it was an offense that was, I mean, it didn't still feel perfect, but it felt good. It felt right, if that makes sense. Um, you know, we went from Greg Roman, who we had um, – definitely criticized over time in terms of his play calling. And it felt like um, Todd Morgan came in and had a little bit better balance in that regard. And, you know, while Odell probably won't give you the numbers that maybe you were looking for, I think that there was a lot of good that came from that signing. I think that there's a veteran leadership that was necessary um, because, you know, prior to that, they didn't really have – um, a lot of veteran leadership in the wide receiving room. And having a guy like Odell, who, you know, had won multiple Pro Bowls and the Super Bowl MVP, uh, having that caliber of a player come in on your roster and, and help, you know, the younger guys, I think is huge. So it did feel like, you know, this was a, a team that was destined to be, to be great. Uh, Mark Andrews went out with that injury in November. And I think a lot of, you know, obviously he was their best offensive weapon. And a lot of people, you know, felt like, you know, oh, what is the season going to do? And by off best offensive weapon, I mean, sans Lamar Jackson, because he's obviously the best offensive weapon. But his best uh, player on that offense was Mark Andrews. And to see Isaiah Likely step up and be the player that he ended up being, uh, it just kind of felt like that they were destined for something great. Uh, which is why that AFC championship game is so disappointing because it felt like they weren't doing anything that got them there. It felt like that they were trying to be a team that they weren't and who they, you know, that wasn't the team that we were used to seeing uh, all year long. Um, I think that there's a lot of people we can blame in that regard. Um, I think that we like to blame coaching, but sometimes you got to blame people on the field as well. Um, because there is a the little bit more flexibility in terms of what guys are able to do. But ultimately, the Ravens have to figure out who they are. And this is not a, a, a thing that really falls specifically to the 2023 Ravens. I mean, we've seen it in 2019 when they were behind. Um, I can even go back as far as 2006 in the playoff game against the Indianapolis Colts when they gave Jamal Lewis the ball one time in the second half after he played really well. So it, this is an organizational thing for some reason. It, they get panicky and then they start doing things that they're not used to. So they're going to have to find a way to be themselves even when the chips are down at that moment. Because it, if, if you play your game and you be who you are, it's not going to always stay down. And um, I hope that that was the lesson learned, but we're going to find out in 2024 if that's the case or not. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, is man, it, um, so, so, so what you're saying that is Derrick Henry the answer? Um, I don't know. The, I mean, don't, the, the answer. I, okay. No, he's not the answer, but let me clarify what I mean by that. I think that the Derrick Henry pickup is a great pickup. Um, but the Ravens already were the number one rushing team in the NFL. I don't know how you get better than number one. So that's what I mean by him not being the answer. They're already good at that. Did they upgrade that position? 100%. Um, and I think that that's something that we can acknowledge, but you can't be better than one. And that is what they were when it came to running the football. So for them um, – you would like to think that because they've invested a lot of capital in Derrick Henry, that they won't make that mistake when they advance to the playoffs next time. Yep. But I think that's a time will tell type of situation. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, I want to uh, pivot a little bit, but stick on the topic of the NFL. I must ask you, how did you become the NFL chick? It started as a blog a long time ago. Um, it's almost 20 years ago. So Fox community had uh, like a blog contest and I joined it and you had to come up with a name for your blog. And I just came up with the NFL chick because I wanted to talk about football um, and it stuck, you know, um, after I, I, I entered the contest, didn't win the contest. And I felt some type of way because I felt like I was the best blogger that they had. So I ended up starting my own website 
Um, and as a result, I named it the NFL chick because that's the name that I had. And I was hoping that like anybody that read my stuff on the Fox community blogs would, you know, recognize the name. So really that's how that, that came about. It was, it started as a blog contest and I just picked the name out of thin air. So, and here I am almost 20 years later, still, you know, rocking NFL chick stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I see you rocking HBCUs too. Which HBCU are you rapping today? Uh, I mean, well, I did go to Morgan, didn't graduate, but I did go. So, you know, I am just, I'm a big um, proponent of HBCUs. Um, I'm, you know, I'm definitely a supporter and, and being in Baltimore, you know, um, we've hosted the CIAA tournament for the last couple of years. It mm -hmm. has just really been such a good thing to spotlight um, HBCUs. And I just think it's very important for us to continue to invest in those colleges. So. No, you, you, you Morgan family though. You were Morgan. Family. We got you. <laughs> and everybody here, we all went to the Morgan State. That's how you That's gotta right. say it. When you talk about Morgan, it's I see be you with that hoodie. I, I grew up. <laughs> I grew up at Morgan. I literally lived um, across the street. Uh, at the, I think they're they're probably like um, apartments for students now. But I lived on Cold Spring and Hill and Road. Um, oh, yeah. so right there, right there. I grew there. up there. Yeah. I grew up. I, I watched all the parades as a kid. So. Um, you know, Morgan has just always been embedded. My dad at one point um, worked at Morgan. So it's just been embedded in, you know, my family for a really long time. So even though I didn't graduate from there, you know, I'm, I'm always I'm always going to represent Morgan. All right. Well, since since Baltimore's in your blood, I got to ask you then about the division, because we've seen upgrades with Cleveland. We've seen how Cincinnati already gets with Joe Burrow and the crew. Now Pittsburgh up in their game with the quarterback position. What team do you feel is the next team that's like kind of on the Ravens heels right now? I think it's, I'd still go with the Browns. I think um, if Deshaun Watson is healthy, uh, but that's the, the biggest caveat, right? Like, is he healthy? Is he not going to be suspended? Cause I heard some rumors about there's another lawsuit that's potentially going to come out for another uh, woman um, similar to what he has already been dealing with um, and that the league could potentially suspend him again if that, you know, goes to trial. Uh, but I think that, you know, the game that we saw with Watson, if they get that Watson, that's a, a very scary football team. They also gonna, they're also going to get Nick Chubb back at, at some point. And now I know that that was a very grueling injury, but we don't know if he'll be the same. But I like Ford. I mean, you know, yeah, I think he did a very good job. Um, that defense is extremely well run. And Miles Garrett, deservingly, in my opinion, because there was a lot of conversation about defensive player of the year, I thought that, that that was a fine choice. Um, so I still have to give it to the Browns. I actually, funny enough, um, on the Win and Drive podcast with myself and Cordell Woodland from 1057 The Fan, I picked, so I did Ravens, Browns, um, Bengals, Steelers. And everybody's like, Browns, you picked second? I'm like, yeah, I just like their roster. I just like the way that their roster was constructed. And I just felt like, they were going to – look, the Browns can't be down for long. And then, you know, I, I don't feel too much away about the Jerry Judy thing because he only, he doesn't catch a ton. But if somehow Jerry Judy miraculously catches, then that really is a problem because you got Amari Cooper on one side, Judy on the other side. Oh, yeah, and Njuku, um, you know, in the tight end situation. So I just think that the Browns, to me – um, are more well equipped. The Bengals, I don't think as much as I really liked the running back from um, Indianapolis. I don't think he's better than Joe Mixon. He's not an upgrade, so I don't, I don't, you know, feel any way about it. They don't have Tyler Boyd currently. He's a free agent, so um, I just feel like the Bengals are going to take a step back. I do think that the Steelers is a team that we do need to watch because their defense is, is constructed really well in terms of what it is that they do and. Ironically enough, I can understand why Patrick Queen went to Pittsburgh because it fits very well into the skill set and what it is that they're going to ask him to do. Um, and, you know, they got guys. You know that they run the football. You know that um, they got some players over there, even though they did trade uh, Deontay Johnson. But they got two tight ends that I think are, are, are good 
uh, tight ends over there. So I definitely think that the Steelers are a team to watch because Russell Wilson wasn't as bad as he has been perceived by the media uh, last year by the Broncos. But I still think that the Browns are the team um, that, for the most part, to me, gives the more viable threat, similar to how they were last year. All right. Um, now, John Harbaugh, he's been with us since 2008. Uh, we pretty much know what he can do as a head coach. We've seen um, him take us to the Super Bowl. He's taken us to multiple playoff appearances. My question is this. Um, now, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I lost a lot of faith in him as a head coach when it comes to the playoffs. I'll call him the Doc Rivers. <laughs> oh, no. That's, oh my God! That's, it's so Too disrespectful. Far. Man. Too far. It, it, so it, disrespectful. It's, it's not really disrespectful. It, it it's is wildly disrespectful. You know you're being shady. You I don't even understand why uh, okay, okay. I'm still, I'm still pissed off about the, the understandable. The, like, Fair I'm enough. Still Fair angry. enough. I'm still angry. But what is? I mean, what do you think he needs to do? Uh, because. Now, granted, he told us what he needed to do at halftime, and he still didn't run the football. He said, we got to run the football. They only ran it six times. We, we, Everybody knows that. It's been a running thing for the past, I don't know, a couple months. What do you think John Harbaugh needs to do to get over the hump with Lamar Jackson and his team going forward if they ever get back to where they got to in the playoffs? Uh, you know, that's a good question because, I mean, if he said – what we were all thinking and then they didn't do it. Are they just not listening to him? I mean, that's not, did, did somebody go rogue? That's the only thing I can come up with. So are you, are you just, you, do you, the players like you and they respect you because he got a high grade in terms of the, the head coach from his team. But I mean, in certain situations, do they just not listen to you? I, I, I don't know the answer. I mean, the only thing I can come up with is just like reiterating you know, sometimes you got to get – look, sometimes you got to get into a little argument or something because if if your playoff hopes are on the line, um, I'm just not going to sit back and do nothing. You know, I, I got to say something, you know. And, and if Lamar was the guy, which there are some plays that Lamar definitely checked out of, run plays, by the way, um, and, and that's why I don't like the fact that we can just put it all on coaching because, again – they were doing this as well. Um, I can ca- I can give you six plays, Rashawn. Uh, please look at the tape. Um, there's at least six <laughs> plays that I can tell you where he checked out of a run play. So this is not something that was happening just with coaches. Players were doing it too. And I think that we have to hold everybody accountable. But if I'm hardball, if that's what's going on, I'm cussing somebody out when they come on that sideline. Like, what the F are y'all doing over here? Because my – our what, – what, Oh, okay. I, I thought you were saying what to me, friend. I'm sorry. I apologize to, to Rashawn about that because I thought he was asking me what was I talking about. So I had to elaborate. But we all good. I, I, I'm at peace. But my thing is, is that Harbaugh, you got to say, as the head coach, you got to get in somebody's face. You got to, hey, what are we doing here? Do you want to go to the Super Bowl or not? Because clearly the Chiefs are giving you lanes. There were literally lanes that we were watching Lamar just completely ignore so he could throw the football. You know, and I'm talking about lanes that he could have ran and gotten first down and plus yardage. You know what I'm saying? So I don't understand why somebody is not getting in somebody's face, because at the end of the day, our Super Bowl aspirations are on the line. And with everything that was going on from a free agency perspective, that was the year that you had. That was the year. I'm not saying that they can't go back because we've seen this story before. Right. The 2011 Ravens were the better team, but the 2012 team won the Super Bowl, right? So it's not that it can't happen. But my thing is, is that you got to be able to be like, look, this is what this we this is what we're going to do. And what we're not going to do is challenge the number four pass defense and act like and and, and after, particularly y'all after we watched the Buffalo Bills literally annihilate them on the ground annihilate them on the ground and you do nothing about it. And so for me, I'm getting in everybody's face. If it's Todd Munkin that's responsible, I'm getting in his face. If it's Lamar Jackson, I'm getting in his face. If it's the running backs, the wide receiver, whoever is out there 
calling these plays. I'm not waiting till the end of the game until it's over to go in on somebody. And guess what? If y'all get it on camera, you get it on camera. But at the end of the day, I want to go to the Super Bowl. And if me speaking and being and, and, and getting in people's face is going to get people to understand what's at stake and what you're doing is not working, then that's what I'm going to do. So, I, you know, to me, sometimes I, I think Harbaugh is a little too nice. And I think that's because he doesn't want to lose the respect of his players. And I, I, I understand that. And I appreciate that. But when it gets into the heat of the moment, bro, you just got to, hey, we're going to kiss and make up later after we win this game, though. And you'll understand why I was, why I was in your face and why we had to get into it the way we did. We did. Because when Travis Kelsey did that to uh, we see him. Jude Justin Reed, Tucker. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm talking about in the game. Yeah, in oh, in the game. Oh, game. Remember, he jumped in his face because he wasn't, oh, yeah. I think he had one catch or something like that. Yes. But, I mean, he literally was kind of non existent. And then what happened, y'all? Andy Reid said, I don't want that white man in my face no more. I'm going to go ahead and start giving him the ball. And when they started giving him the ball, what happened? That's all I'm saying. Sometimes you got to get in somebody's face. You know what I'm saying? John Harbaugh got to get in somebody's face. And my guy in Gravis, I wish I could be the head coach because I'm getting in everybody's face. Because what y'all not going to do is not run that football. Not on my watch. Okay? If I got to go out there and do it myself, I'm, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, get the pads off. Get, give me a pad. <laughs> <laughs> give me a pad. <laughs> well, let, me, let me follow up then since we're talking about the Ravens in the Super Bowl. What do you feel is the missing piece? Because now you, you, we have Derrick Henry. You said that we already have the number one rushing attack. That's going to – I mean, the run, the, you said the run game is going to get even better, but we can't get no better than number one. So what do you feel is that one thing that's going to help us get over the hump? Um, it, it's got to be – well, this season is different, right, because there's a lot of question marks that we have. Uh, currently to to talk about the offensive line is missing three guys um so they're going to have to figure out what they're going to have to do to retool that to make sure that Derrick Henry you know can get in between the tackles or get off tackle um you got a situation where your pass rush is still questionable um because currently all you have is away in the job all um Trenton Simpson, I, I know that a lot of people want him to replace Patrick Queen, but ironically, coming out of Clemson, he was better known as a pass rusher. So uh, it will be interesting to see if they're going to put him back into what his, he's really good at or if they're just going to have him do, you know, a, a similar situation where Queen, well, he, where he is still kind of, you know, going after the rusher, but it's just going to be a, a different type of um, – it's, it's going to be a different type of play. But – I feel like that this, you know, once they get those two things put together, this team is, I, I don't really have something that I feel like they need, right? Because I could sit here and say, well, they could, they, they could probably use a big body receiver. And then I'd say, but then you have a guy like Mark Andrews or you have a guy like Isaiah Likely and you can use a little bit more two tight ends that's, or you can use Charlie Kolar because that's a big dude too. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So maybe it doesn't have to be a receiver. Maybe it can be one of the tight ends that you start using more for red zone. Um, or I could say, you mm -hmm. know, oh, well, they need to, you know, upholster this situation. But ultimately the Ravens, when you look at games like what happened in the AFC Championship, that, that situations like that, they beat themselves. And ultimately, whatever it is, the uh, the agendas that they're having in those games when they're having these breakdowns, because what's happening is, is like, oh, I'm behind. I'm not used to being behind, so I'm panicking. You have to learn not to panic. At the end of the day, you got to do what you are best at. And that's always going to win games. Coming into that game, Kansas City was absolutely concerned that they were going to run the ball over all over them, particularly because of what, they, what happened to them the week before. And when they found the Ravens played literally into their strength, they're like, wow, we didn't know it was going to be this easy. This was the best team in the NFL. So they just have to be themselves. Literally, that's it. Obviously, there's some players you need to plug and play. You need to find some more pass rushers. You need to get some offensive linemen. You probably need to get more uh, defensive backs in terms of just having some depth there. But ultimately, they are fine. They just cannot 
be somebody that they're not. And that is what's going to get them over that hump. Literally, I don't care if you're down two scores. If it's the second quarter, you got two more quarters to play. Just be yourself. And that's going to get you to win the football game. Now, you did mention a, a, a receiver. Is there any particular receiver that you see from the draft or from free agency that you'd like for the Ravens to pick up? I do like Keon Coleman, which is crazy for me to say because I, I, I do not like Florida State at all. <laughs> I am a very well known Gator fan, but you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I think that he's a, a prototype that I would like. The funny thing is, I don't know if that's what Lamar in them likes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. It feels like they like the smaller guys, like the Zays, the Hollywood Browns. Bateman isn't that, you know, big or whatever uh, uh, of a receiver. It feels like they have a, a certain type of player that they really like. I'd like to see a guy like a Keon Coleman now. Since you do like, I do not like Michael Gallup at all. He can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> like only Gallup Rashawn. At all. Matt, Matt, he can't catch, bro. And, and and while I understand that his opportunities were limited, there's a reason for that. It's because he can't catch. So I, I just can't do it. Um, I, I, I think, oh, Keenan Allen would have been perfect because he's not fast. And I get it, but he runs routes better than anybody else in this almost. And he's a top three route runner in this league. He would have been perfect in that situation, but it didn't obviously happen. If the Ravens want to stick to, you know, fast, speedy guys, I've been telling everybody for two years now, look at Ricky Pearsall's tape, get back to me. If you want to find, like, your Puka Nakua's in terms of, like, not he's not the same size because he's a small dude, but since the Ravens like small, fast dudes, that's going to be your guy. So, uh, I'd like a, a Coleman type of player in terms of body style, but you know, the Ravens, it feels like don't really like those types of players. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes, but I really don't foresee them making a move in free agency, uh, at the wide receiver position. No, no, no big splash, uh, like how we did yeah. with Odell. Mm-hmm. Odell, well, we know Odell is done. I would have loved to see Tyler Boyd, another dude that's not fast but knows how to get separation. I would have loved to see because I, I think that Boyd is a, was an unsung hero in Cincinnati because everybody's focusing on Chase and Higgins, and then he's just there. You know what I'm saying? So, and he was able to make plays, but ultimately, I just think that that's. I think that they're probably going to look into the draft because they do have a lot of wide receivers that's coming out, so there'll be rounds of guys available. Um, I got a question. Well, actually, it actually is two questions. One, do we get Jadavion Clowney back? And I hope two, so. And 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 two, um, okay. How do you how, how do you feel about Zach Orr? Um, this is his first time being a defensive head coach. Um, now, granted, usually uh, when he first came to Baltimore, uh, it took him a while to adjust to the defense as a player, and then he became a Pro Bowler, and of course, we know the story with his the neck and him having a transition to being a, um, a coach, um, assistant coach. But um, I'm, I'm icing. You might have to see a similar path where he's, you know, coming into the, you know, as a defensive coordinator and finding his way his first year. And then maybe hopefully down the line, he figured out, figures out his groove and who he likes to use and yada, yada. Who do you, I mean, how do you feel about him getting his opportunity uh, as being the head, the defensive head coach of this team right now. I, I you know, I, I'm excited for him. I don't really know what to expect because, you know, I mean, um, things like this in terms of like coordinators, since this is his first coordinating gig, we, we really don't know, you know, how that's going to play out now. What he told us was he was going to be aggressive. And with the NFL just banning the hip drop rule, I, you already can't tackle. I'm not really sure what <laughs> what this means. Sounds to me like a lot of guys going to get fined <laughs> a lot this season, if you ask me. Uh, but I understand the logic in saying, like, look, we can't allow the league to kind of tell us what to do and dictate to us what to do. We still got to be aggressive. We still got to, you know, come at these guys. And and I can understand that. I I. I would like to think he won't be overly aggressive um, in that regard. Um, I'm excited for him to see, you know, how this all plays out because I think a lot of people thought that Mike McDonald would be the heir to John Harbaugh, but I've kind of proclaimed or thought 
that Zach Orr was actually the one that they've been putting in training to be the next guy. And it makes a whole lot of sense. You know, was a Raven, played for the Ravens, been with the organization. So it feels like they're kind of molding him into that situation. And depending on how this plays out for him in terms of defensive coordinator, he could potentially be the, the next heir apparent of the the Ravens head coaching after John Harbaugh decides that he wants a front office job. So I'm excited to see how this goes. You know, Um, the players seemed excited. I remember when he was promoted, Kyle Van Noy had nice things to say about it. So I'm excited for him and I'm excited to see how this all plays out. All right. You, 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 you brought it up. You brought it up because I I was literally about to go there. This rule, what, 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 what are we doing? What would we be doing? Because in in the the owners are they keep banging the table about safety this safety that, and on the other hand they add games. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What what better way to create more injuries than to add more games? But now they're in the name of safety, this hip drop swivel tackle that's now illegal. What is a defender supposed to do in the NFL right now? Um, you know, it, it's funny because there's a video montage going around of like Ray Lewis and, and making tackles. Um, and that they're, they're like wrestling gator roll tackles, and, and it is they, they, it is pretty good, it is a good tackle. But this is the part that I think that people don't put into the consideration. Um, safeties aren't going to be as big as Ray Lewis, certain defensive backs aren't going to be as big as Ray Lewis. Um, so they're not going to be able to make those kinds of tackles because the guys that they're defending are going to be bigger than them, right? We have Ray Lewis in terms of size was essentially his peers with the the guys that he was playing against, the receivers, the tight ends, right? So hip drops happen because you can't hit high, which I think we all can can agree, understand that that's completely That's cool. Yeah, that's fine. You can't hit low, which, you know, I can understand that as well in terms of like knees and, and, and below. So there's a, a middle area and got and safeties that are going, that are tackling tight ends or, you know, tackling wide receivers like Mike Williams size and, and they're like 5'10". Um, there's a huge disadvantage. The only way to bring them down is to have that type of tackle. Um, the gator roll tackle really ain't going to work because they don't have the size to to kind of, you know, to kind of enforce that. So I don't think anything is going to change. But what I do think is going to happen is a lot of people's pockets are going to get hit as a result of it. I, I don't think that you can't – people – look, and when you – I don't know if you guys watch college football, but I watch it pretty regularly I'm, I'm it's my favorite sport that's all they do that is literally the tackle that they do I mean the vast majority of these tackles in college football are hip drop tackles okay so I'm not really how now you're gonna have to deprogram these kids and teach them a new technique and so I would be okay with this if the league was genuinely concerned about safety but we know that that's not the case. Right. And that's the problem that I have with this is that y'all are doing everything in your measure to prevent extra benefits for these guys once they retire. That is the problem that I, it is very disingenuous to me. You really don't care about player safety. If you did, you wouldn't have Thursday night football games. You wouldn't be adding extra games. You want to try to add this 18th game. You added a 17th game, but you didn't expand your rosters. You don't care about safety. And that's the part that makes all of this disingenuous to me. So, And on top of that, they're going to be playing on Christmas Day. And Christmas Day is on a Wednesday. So, so they're saying that the Saturday people are going to play on the Christmas Day games whoever they are playing that saturday before so it's still going to be four days like the sunday to thursday but regardless it's still unnecessary it's still not safe to play for guys to play football four days later um and news flash football the contact sport of football is dangerous <laughs> there's nothing that's going to stop people from getting hurt unfortunately so good luck trying to eliminate defenders doing their jobs because one they ain't going to do it that's first and foremost. I doubt that people are even listening to this at this point. They just gonna have to deal with the fines. Um, and two, it's part of the game, whether y'all like it or not. Hmm. What is, go ahead. I don't know. Go ahead. Huh? No, no, no. Go ahead. 
Uh, my, my, my question, I wanted to circle back to something that we, uh, we had asked previous. You talked about John Harbaugh's um, possible um, next person in line. How long do you think that John Harbaugh remains as head coach in Baltimore? That's a good question. I mean, this is his 15th season, I believe, coming up. Mm, yeah, 15, 16. 17. Sorry, 17. Yeah, 17. I'm okay. sorry. I, my math was wrong. Because he came in 2008, 2004, you gotta add, gotta add to one. This is his seventh <laughs> coming up. I'd like to think in a couple of years, once we get close to 20, he's gonna find his 20th season. He's gotta be like, all right, I, I might. Now I could be wrong here. John Harbaugh might want to coach until he's 80 years old. He might want to be Bill Belichick out here coaching. I I don't know, but that's gonna be an interesting thing to see if they are still without another Super Bowl and they get close to that 20. Do they pull um, a Pete Carroll where they force him out and just say, hey, look, we're not firing you because we want to put you in the front office, but you can't be the head coach here no more. We want somebody young or, you know, in, in, in innovative. Or do they allow him to make the decision and let him walk into the sunset? Uh, but I, I feel like when we get closer to that 20, which is in a couple of seasons, We'll start having more conversations if if he's not already retired or you know out of here, which I don't think he'll be out of here. By the way, ever I think that even if they fire him, they're gonna Pete Carroll him and put him in a and put him in a front office position. Do you do you think he's a Hall of Fame coach? Yes, um, I understand why to Baltimore that is uh, arguable, um, but to everybody outside the league. He has an enormous amount of respect. He has a uh, winning percentage that would implicate him to be a Hall of Famer. He is going to the Hall of Fame, whether we like it or not. So um, I definitely think that John Harbaugh, when he leaves, he is going to be considered one of the top um, head coaches in this league. Now, you did say his heir apparent, you think, could be on the defensive side. Do you think that that's a good move for the Ravens organization or should they look on the offensive side being that offensive coaches is the the it thing right now and the coaches who are more successful right now outside of Mike Tomlin? I wouldn't say that. I mean, my guy over there in Houston is not an offensive coach. He got his thing to the divisional round. Nobody saw the Houston Texans go to the thing, go into the divisional round. Nobody saw that happening and and, and they yeah. made it happen. So I don't necessarily agree with that logic. Um, Mike McDonald just got a job. He's a defensive. He was a defensive coordinator. Um, so I, I understand the logic because it's an offensive league. Um, but sometimes it's just about how. What's your football IQ? Period. You know what I'm saying? So just because I play defense doesn't mean I don't understand what's needed on the other side of the ball. Um, and so that's the part that I think. I, you just want the best candidate possible. I don't think it, for me, I don't think it matters like, oh, they should specifically be an offensive coach. I think if you put together an offensive staff that is co extremely competent, you'll be fine. It doesn't matter. Um, but ultimately you just want, you just want your best leader of men. And I, I don't think that that there's an, it's just based on what each organization wants. I don't think it has to be an offensive guy moving into this. Uh, what are your thoughts on Baltimore um, maybe getting the NFL draft coming here soon? Um, you know, it, I'd be interesting to see how this works. It would be cool to see, you know, they, they are saying that the Chesapeake Bay is, is clean and, you know, on certain days is swimmable. I'm never going to find out because um, that's <laughs> not you don't want to become a mutant. Mm -mm. I, that's not my ministry, uh, but I'll, I'll let the others uh, ah, figure that out. No, no, no X Men '97 for you? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, so it would be kind of cool to see, like guys, maybe get on the one little water taxis or something, come across and get on. Um, I, I gotta assume that you know Pratt and Lombard streets would be um, closed off, so essentially downtown would just be closed off for the fans, and it, you know, the harbor place the area uh, around harbor place you can get people in there i think it'd be really cool so i mean you or maybe you could just move it to mt at bank stadium and you know you got the 
the whole renovations that they're doing over there at M&T Bank Stadium. So maybe you can make that happen and have an overflow, you know, maybe at Camden Yards. I don't know. But um, that's not my job to come up with the logistics. But I'm, I am interested to see how they can make it work. Look, because Cleveland had a draft a couple of years ago. If Cleveland can get a draft, Baltimore can get a draft. That's, how, that's all I'm saying. I've been to Cleveland before, and if they were able to do it, all I'm saying is that, that Baltimore can figure out a way to get a draft. Totally agree with you on that. <laughs> that's funny. Um, so you um, – so we were talking about uh, being lead leaders of men. Um, it's easy to gravitate offense defense because that's typically what most of the head coaches are. John Harbaugh is one of the rare cases where right. the, a special teams guy was able to um, rise up the ranks and sustain a very successful. We already talked about. I, I, I believe he's a Hall of Famer too. He's able to to uh, sustain a very successful career. What? What would you say to the point of how important it is to groom everybody, not just your side of the ball, but being able to be being able to have that relationship and the same type of, you know, just being even across the board and not just and not gearing towards one side of the ball? Um, I'm indifferent about that. I mean, obviously you want that. You want somebody that's well versed on both sides, but I, I just don't feel like, in terms of the NFL, that's not something we see per se. Like, there's a specialty. You gotta, you either an offensive specialist, a defensive specialist, a special team specialist, right? So, I guess in that regard, that's a hard um, thing to kind of dissect because most people are labeled as offense, defense, special teams, right? We, very rarely do we see somebody that's like, oh, I can, I'm, I'm really good at, you know, scheming for both sides of the ball. I'm not saying that they don't exist. I'm just saying that I don't, we don't know those people because they were already assigned to one side or the other or the third. Um, but I feel like when you, you know, the, Football minds, great football minds, in my opinion, knows what it takes on both sides of the ball. I'll give you – Bill Belichick is a great example of that because um, I really feel like Bill Belichick was essentially running the show on both sides of the ball. I mean, I understand that he had coordinators, and I understand that defense was his specialty. We all know that. But Bill Belichick, to me, was the mastermind in terms of – game planning for other teams because he was so smart in terms of um, his football IQ, right? And the Patriots were boring to watch. They were some of the most boring champions to me ever. They didn't have anybody that was like really exciting, except for that time they had Randy Moss, but they didn't win championship that right. year. Um, it, but, but what they did was they, they – they knew how to scheme well, you know, timing schemes were their, were, were their things, which is a lot of times, you know, hard to defend. But also, Bill Belichick was very simplistic because football is a simple sport. So if a defense is giving you, well, I'm taking away the run, right, because I'm putting eight people in the box, but I, I'm, 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 you know, single covering these guys, then Bill Belichick was throwing the football. If Bill Belichick was run, if, if the if defenses was running, you know, dimes regularly, but you know, had the, the middle of the field open, he was running the football. I mean, he really was making things simple, and that's why the Patriots were as good as they were for such a long time, allowing to take what defenses was giving them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you have a high football IQ, you might be a special uh, specializing in one area. But you understand what it takes there in this area to 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 move along, right? And and while we'd like to think that that's a lot of people, that's coaching is probably not. I, I think that there's a special group of those types of guys, and I'm sure that they do exist, and I'm sure that they put their imprints on the other side of of the ball as well. Um, but I would love to see more of that in upcoming in terms of coaching. That would be really, really dope um, because I do think that it, it it would be it's it's necessary. You don't have to specifically have tunnel vision for this 
you got to see everything in order. If you want things to be successful and you want to be able to, to, to make your mark, you got to understand everything that, that, that you're saying. All right. Um, well, I got, well, I got, I got two more questions. Um, okay. one, do you see Rashard Bateman finally having a breakout here for the Baltimore Ravens? It's my first question. I don't question. see why not. I, I mean, I know everybody's down on bait. I get it. Um, I know he's, that y'all have some trust issues with bait, but uh, he's dropped the ball and all those things. And, um, I think some of it is warranted. I do also think this, a lot of it is overreaction. Um, and probably because there is an expectation of a guy like him because he was the first round um, draft pick and you want to see the residuals come immediately and it hasn't happened yet. But um, I also would argue Rashard Bateman came onto this team with no veteran leadership. At mm -hmm. one point he had to be the veteran and he's trying to figure it out just like everybody else. Um, what I'm hoping is that, Rashard Bateman really figures it out this year, him and Lamar, because he's getting open. I mean, you know, they, they single covering him and he's getting open. Um, but for whatever reason, him and Lamar just don't have a connection. And I would love for them to find a way to connect. I hope that they get some time together this off season and spend some time together to try to, you know, work that out. Um, because he's going to be important, especially if they're not going to pick up anybody in, you know, in free agency, whether it's now or post June cuts. And even if you do bring in a wide receiver from the draft, that chat, that, that wide receiver is a rookie. So now Rashad Bateman and Nelson Aguilar are going to be your veterans. So you're going to have to use him, whether you like it or not. So um, I really hope that they can find some chemistry this off season that can, roll over into the regular season because if this team wants to win and they want and they want to be feared in a passing perspective they're going to need Rashad Bateman they're going to need him to step it up and in order for them to do that him and Lamar just have to find a rhythm and I'm hoping that they can do that and here's my final question and it has nothing to do with the Ravens but the Baltimore Orioles their season starts Thursday what are your what are your expectations for the Orioles and um, how, how, where do you see this team going? Oh, man, I, 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 I mean, they, hey, look, went to the one hundred and one games, went to the playoffs, didn't work out the way as expected. But, you know, that was a this is a very young team. And last year's team was very young. And um, I think people underestimated the Rangers because they were a team that was injured much in the middle of the season. So we kind of forgot about them, but two things, they spent $500 million in the off season because they was tired of playing around. They had to find a way to beat the Houston Astros. And then they started getting healthy in September and then made it, a, they, they forced us to remember who they were. So unfortunately for the Orioles, they caught the Rangers at, wrong, at the wrong time because they were, they were healthy by the time they played them. And that just that just drove the momentum of them going to the World Series um, and winning the World Series. But you hope that that was a learning lesson for them in terms of like, OK, we got our feet wet. We in the playoffs and we got some work to do. You know what I'm saying? So adding Corbin Burns, I think, was huge. Um, it's not not think I know. Adding Corbin Burns was huge. Now it doesn't help that Kyle Bradish and John Means is not going to be available, but they're they're optimistic that they'll be back within a month. So that's good news. Hopefully Cole Irvin can hold down the fort um, for like the fourth spot or whatever. Um, I'm excited about this offense. They got too many offensive guys, man. I mean, like that's a good problem to have. You know, we're mm -hmm. arguing about yeah. you know uh, Holiday and you know why didn't he come up and and I'm not here to tell anybody how to feel about it but the one the one thing that that tells me is that the, this organization has guys they got a lot of guys and you're going to see jackson at some point this season so it doesn't even matter and um i do think that they are going to definitely be something to reckon with unfortunately they're in a division with tampa in a division with the yankees in a division with that's Toronto. right Wow. I don't respect – I mean, I don't want to say I don't respect. Boston ain't going to be hitting on nothing this year, so it is what it is. But those other three teams are going to 
are going to do something. But the, what I think is in the favor of the Orioles is health because of their because they're young. Because the Yankees can't stay healthy. They never do. Garrett Cole what? already out. Garrett Cole's already out, and he will be out for a month. Look, um, all, all we need is Judge. Aaron, 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 Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge is out every year. He literally is dealing with some abdominal issue. We think he's going to be ready for open today. Okay, fine. But he that's the guy you can't depend on from a health perspective. Um, you hope that Juan Soto can fill in the blanks. But, again, health is what the Yankees deal with. That's their crutch, right? And then the Tampa Ra- – the Rays, same thing, pitching – all of those their pitchers got injured last year. Um, they're starting guys, so that's kind of what tanked them. Even though they were still very competitive with those guys going down. So if the Orioles can stay healthy, which is something like I said that the other teams kind of ha- have struggled with, then to me they can absolutely repeat. But I just don't think that it's going to be. It's definitely a different scenario because you know those guys are loaded too. So. You know, oddly enough, that was the last time I seen you in person was opening day last year. It was you, Cordell. Yeah. Um, Glenn. I forget, <laughs> yeah. And Glenn was there. Yep. I, I got, I got. I'll be there more. again this week. Well, yeah, I, I'll be, I'll be at the, the tailgate with uh, Paulie D this year. He has a tailgate? Mm hmm. Uh, yep. I'm assuming this is Jimmy's. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last uh my my last question. Um who do you think are two surprise teams from each conference that's going to surprise everybody, make a splash, maybe make a make the playoffs, call some noise, call some ruckus. Kind of like the Texas football, baseball. Uh uh football. A surprise team. Okay. Commanders. No. Um NFC <laughs> if, if they get Caleb Williams, I'm going with the Chicago Bears. I like the way I like what they're constructing over there. If they get if 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 Caleb is their guy, I mean they got they brought in Keenan Allen. They still got yeah. DJ Moore. They got a running back. Um, I like what they got. Uh, they got uh, your boy from the Commanders. Um, oh, Montez Sweat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I like I their team ain't that bad, and so the quarterback might now they in the they in the division. That you know I love Jordan Love. He's ascending, so it's gonna be hard. But um, if Caleb can translate quickly, or at least not let him be who he was at USC, because he was doing too much at USC, he, he was, was kind of lie. forced. He was, but he was forced <laughs> to because that defense was so bad. You know right. what I'm saying? He had, he felt like he had to put the whole team on his back. And I'm saying this time, he, it doesn't feel like he has to because they got guys over there. You know what I'm saying? I think that they could be a team that we, they could be the next Houston Texans where we're like. Wow, this team is actually pretty good. Um, on the offensive side, I mean, on the AFC side, I go with the Indianapolis Colts. Um, I, I I already told you I'm a Gator fan. I love Anthony Richardson. I, yes, he's he's he can be he's a roller coaster ride. Yeah. But when <laughs> but, but but when you at the height of the ride and get ready to go there, it's fun. It's fun. It's it's real fun. He's a fun football player. He's a very skilled football player. He reminds me a lot of Cam Newton um, in terms of like how he runs the ball, in terms of like he got, he got, and he got an arm. Dude got a cannon. You don't have to, the, him running RPOs with Jonathan Taylor, that could be, na- the, hey, both of them, I ain't trying to tackle neither one of them. And you already can't hip <laughs> drop nobody. Already- so, you know, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, and look, if he gets hurt, they got Black always the backup. So you know, <laughs> they uh they gonna be all right. So I um you know I I think I, I don't know if that's a bangle that somebody put in there, but you can't. That that, that 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 that's our resident uh, Colts fan. So he's I'm sure he's loving what you're saying. <laughs> oh, is that a what is that? Is that a horse? I have no idea what Mark. I, I don't know what that is. It's a, the the, Mark, Colts, the horse, me. the bottom of the shoe, the the coat. Shoot, that's, yeah. Oh, okay. Now I see it. It's a horse. Oh, yeah, it's a horse. Okay, so it is a horse. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I think the Colts would be an interesting dynamic. And also, y'all, they in the AFC South too, which look, I know, you know, I know the Texans. We we are, we're loving CJ Stroud right now. So I get it. But we're loving CJ Stroud too because we didn't see Anthony uh Anthony Richardson as well. Um right. so we didn't get that. We didn't get that. The Jags are phony. 
the Titans, I don't know who the hell is there. They they actually have a good nucleus team too, but I don't trust Will Levis at this point. So uh, that's why I think that the uh, Indianapolis Colts could potentially make this interesting. So be fun. Most definitely. Well, this was lit, y'all. Yeah, Dad. Look, I'm glad that we could we could have her on. I mean, like this, this is and a perfect way to close out Women's History Month too. Yes, thank y'all for having me on Women's History uh, Month. Oh, uh, no problem. <laughs> Tell the people how we can find you. So, of course, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever, at the NFL Chick. Um, also, uh, follow uh, my podcast at Gridiron Gals, um, G A L S, um, on all of those platforms. I'm on 1057 The Fan sundays and it's usually wednesdays but for the month of april we'll be on tuesdays from seven to nine and sundays from 12 to three as well as the winning drive podcast with my guy cordell woodland from 1057 the fan um it's obviously off season so we'll do it once a week but once draft and stuff comes around we'll start revving up to two to three times a week hey look at, at this point you family now you're more than welcome to come back anytime you uh you have some free time and thank you for being on and thank everybody for tuning in. This has been the Flex Zone, y'all. Make sure y'all catch us. When when Raj? We 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 oh, we'll catch w you tomorrow. We got uh well, well, we, well, we do right. Well we well let me let me let me Y'all always is late though. Yes, yes, yes. We, yes. I be sleepy. Yes, yes. Hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're always we're always this we, late. Hey, you, look, we, we we sleepy too. <laughs> you usually usually we we, we would have our, our, our host. We'll be on right now, but our host is having technical difficulties. But yes. hopefully, the next time you come on, it'll be more smooth. It would be more, you know, go right into it. But we're glad that you came on. We've been trying to get you on for a minute, and this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, time for you to come on. Thank and, you uh, for having yeah, me. I appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it as well. Uh, I see everybody's in the chat. Um, this is my favorite comment. My, my favorite comment right yes. here. Yes. That's my guy right there, you know, because that's my oh, family. Yes, right you know, he got to pump up his, his folks, you know. I probably <laughs> ain't, you know, you he see better guess. But what he going to do is pump up his people because that's what that's he right. do. That's, that's right. I'm going to support him. He's going to support me. So shout out to my guy, Engraven. So shout uh, out to Engraven. Uh, again, before I go, I just want to, again, extend um, my condolences to the six families who were impacted in today's um, unfortunate and horrific uh, accident. So. Just wanted to say that again because you know today has been a day, but praying for those people. Yeah, yep. what did our good what did our good governor say? I think he said um Maryland tough but Baltimore strong. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Matter of fact, I put that in my uh my little my little um what but you was on it? the Twitter? You was on the no, Twitter. No, 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 no. Instagram. No, no, no. Oh, you know you old, yo. Twitter. You know you old, yo. Which one was it, yo? <laughs> I'm a Facebook guy, but no, I put it on the um the lower third. On, on a, if you, I, I, well, you know how you. I can't work this damn thing. Anyway, what is age? What is age? Damn it, Byron, this is your fault. But anyway, <laughs> it's been a great show. Um, check us out tomorrow. We'll be on for AEW Dynamite, and we'll be, we will have more content because we have to do the NFL draft. Yeah. Uh, um do it well you byron and Pavante will be doing the profiles for each player that comes out and of course we'll be back next monday for another show so it's been great uh wonderful wonderful time on the internet as always and thank you to our guest rita hubbard thank you thank you thank you definitely appreciate you and we are going to cut this one uh, we're gonna we're gonna say sayonara and we'll see you later. So right. peace. So, so next right. time we gone, we are out peace. Of Hit that music, Raj. Nah, no music today. We just <laughs> you cut it straight, yo. <laughs> just cut it out. <laughs>